Ghost in the Tank is a snack inspired by a love story. Hello, sharks. My name is Kendra Bennett. I'm from Longmont, Colorado, and I'm here seeking $200,000 in exchange for 10% of my family's business, Honey Bunchies. Whatever you're doing right now, stop what you're doing and give some super claps for Super Kendra Bennett. Woo! Welcome, Kendra. How are you doing today? <laughs> Thank you. Doing great, especially now that I'm here with you. Likewise. I'm so <laughs> glad that you, we were able to get our schedules together and take the time uh, to make, make this interview happen. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking your time. Thank you, Joe. You're so welcome. So uh, we, let's just uh, jump. Well, before we jump in, you were saying um, right before we started that you uh, were you did a lot of preparation for the show, and we're gonna get into that preparation later. But um, you said every every time you went to search for something, a certain someone was coming up. <laughs> yeah. So prior to well, during the whole application process of Shark Tank, and prior to filming, I actually did do a lot of research online and every single time i googled a shark tank episode the one the only joe pardo would show up every single time so i had a chance to see several of your recaps along the way and that helped me prepare for my air date <laughs> <laughs> so thank well, you <laughs> you well, no, that, i'm so i'm so glad that you came across the channel uh and and it helped you in that preparation uh for you know for going into one of the biggest moments of of your life you know uh getting the walk into the tank yeah that was a huge moment for sure <laughs> so let's let's jump right into that moment uh let's talk about how you were feeling getting ready to walk down this hallway well, uh, I, I'm an athlete. I've been an athlete my whole life. I'm super competitive. And before those doors opened, I found myself going into competitor mode. <laughs> and I was jumping up and down and shaking my arms out, my legs out, like I was going to be doing some kind of physical competition. I don't know why. It's just what I reverted back to. So it was uh, it was intense, but, um, but I was ready. I, I had been preparing for a long time. It's it's doesn't take away from the fact that it's a little bit intimidating walking down that hall and uh, seeing these sharks who I've been watching literally since the show started in 2009. So it was, it was a big moment. No, that, that would be uh, a huge moment. So were you, were you, I mean, I, I'm going to say you probably were feeling pretty confident, right? Given, given the way that your, your pitch started out and the way that uh, that confidence oozed throughout, even, even to the very end, um, how were how were you feeling about what you had prepared with going in? Yeah, uh, I, I did feel very confident. I, generally speaking, I'm a very confident person, um, and I really believe in our product and our company. I know what we have. I know our numbers. I know uh, our projections. I know the company inside now. I eat, sleep, and breathe this company. <laughs> so I was ready. No, that is, I mean, that's something I, I feel like uh, it, it should go without saying. Like a lot of entrepreneurs going in should know their numbers or should know their business better than anybody else. Um, and then it doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes the sharks who aren't really even in their business knows their business better than they do. Uh, or, or at least as well as they do, without even having that experience going down that path. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I, I don't think it should be understated how important that is, and how, uh, how. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I was going to say something on top of important, but no, I, I, how critical I think it is for you to understand like what direction um, the business should be looking at. You know, when you're making those three months, six month, a year project, two, five year projections. It's like for you know, just for the, like the sake of having a, a a dream of where you want to be and and having those numbers, uh, it like the back, you know, on the back of your hand or knowing it like the back of your hand, uh, it would be, it, it's just it, it's absolutely something that if you don't and you're watching this video, go go and eat sleep those numbers. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> know your numbers, and it's it's so tough too as an entrepreneur because you will oftentimes be in the weeds. 
and uh, just get caught up in day-to-day -day activities, it can be really hard to stop and take a minute to get to know your numbers and know them so well that uh, you're just crunching them all the time because day-to-day -day can suck you in and keep you very, very busy. So um, it's a tough balancing act for sure. Yeah, I know. I, I've made uh, lots of videos over the years saying, like, slow down in your business so that you have that opportunity, not just to enjoy where the, where you are, right, and take take in the scenery, um, but to also be able to, to take that time to look at the numbers and then make some, like I said, projections based upon those numbers that maybe you aren't um, or finding out something else about your business that you don't even really you don't even realize because you're like, I think I know <laughs> because at like seven months ago or a year and a half ago or five years ago, for that matter, this is how it was. And this is the the metrics in which we're tracking and this is how it goes. But if you don't take that that moment to like go back and like just reevaluate things change, technology changes, the business might have actually changed without you even realizing it. I mean, how many times have you heard like, I was a jeans company and then it turned out, no, I was actually a technology company and I didn't even realize it, you know? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, that's where you find your little hidden gems is, you know, looking under those crevices and, and under every rock. Um, Yogi Berra has a really good saying, and I'm so going to butcher it, <laughs> but trying to navigate. I, Yogi Berra has a lot of good sayings, but he, you know, he, like, he absolutely does. He's amazing. Um, but trying to navigate anywhere without a roadmap, you're driving blindly and your financials are your roadmap for sure. Absolutely. 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 That is um, it. You know, and, and again, I think sometimes it's also easy to get blinded by like, well, I did a million dollars. So like we figured it out. And it's like, yeah, but that how are you going to get the five? Like just keep yeah. doing the same thing, like when the same amount of time, energy and money that you've already had to pour to get to there, like it's, it's, it probably ain't the same thing. Right. Well, they say what gets you what got you here is not going to get you there. So true. <laughs> so true. We're, we're in that deep and thick right now with, uh, with our growth. It's, it is, um, it's ever evolving. What you're doing in the early days is temporary because then you have to figure out what the next block is that you're going to build on top of it. And then that changes everything. And that's temporary until you build the next block and you're constantly evolving and everything you outgrow everything at some point or another and you have to be creative and um, a lot of entrepreneurs are very creative and we come up with ways to do things in a very entrepreneurial way, <laughs> especially when you're self-funded. I mean, that's that causes um, the need for a lot of creativity or what I like to call duct tape solutions. <laughs> yeah, duct tape fixes a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, you know, I think that can't be understated either is the level of self-funding um, that goes into a business. And, you know, look, a lot of people could be like, oh, well, why why haven't you been able to do X, Y and Z amount of money? Like that sounds like, like oh, it's only two hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's only four hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, but when it's just you and your money that's funding it, it's a big it's a it's a totally different animal than like. Oh, we, you know, we take in, uh, you know, 150, 200,000, 300,000, 500,000 at a shot, like in a shot in the arm every three months, six months, a year. And how much more we could do with that? How many more people we can reach with that? How much more people we can educate with that to get them, uh, uh, you know, about educate about the brand and, and all that and bring awareness to it. And it's like, but you, well, you don't own it at, you know, a hundred percent of it at that point, but also that's not how every business operates, right? Like, I mean, oh, we're talking about Shark Tank and all that. So like people, you know, want to believe that the investment money is the way, the, the only way to get, you know, somewhere. And it's like, no, there's, there's plenty. It just, sometimes it just takes a lot longer. And in your case, with well, your story starting in 2010, yeah. It and 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 I think what was I what I was most blown away about it and I don't I didn't watch m my reaction video to it I just watched it um just you know vanilla, like vanilla um and what I I think looking back at it I'm most blown away by is 
the amount of stores that you've been able to you were well, up to that point have been able to break into um and then the numbers reflect like it's like it's like almost like a dose of reality it's like you could be in thousands and thousands of stores or you know let's bring it for social media influencers you could have millions of followers and literally still make ten thousand dollars a year or twenty thousand dollars <laughs> a year or whatever it is like you know, not, the numbers can always seem big in one aspect, and then it's kind of like, ah, that still seems kind of small. It's like there's a lot of room for growth there, right? It's all relative. Before I got into this business, I remember hearing about a, 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 like a granola company that was at a farmer's market, and they were discovered by Whole Foods. And at the time, I thought, wow, they are set. They're done. <laughs> <laughs> They're in Whole Foods. They can retire. This is before I got into food and beverage and had any idea. Um, you know, we're in Whole Foods. <laughs> we're still going at it. So, yeah, it's all relative. It's all perspective. Um, if I knew where we'd be today, even just a year or two ago, I would be blown away with the growth that we've had. And I think I feel that way literally every year. Like I, if somebody would have told me we would be here by now, I'd almost not believe it, but we just keep climbing and you just don't always know where that, that climb is going to take you. But as long as you keep climbing, there's going to be something, but our growth has been extremely slow and that's intentional. It is not because of lack of demand by any means. We've actually been, a top selling bar in most of our retailers all along the way. Uh, thank you. We've, we've had to choose to slow our growth down because we are self-funded. So um, to give you an example, we were actually the number one selling bar in the nutrition bar category in Sprouts Farmers Market in all the Colorado stores for almost two years. I mean, that's over... All the national brands, our little local company was outselling all of them. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it's easy to think like that's the end all be all, but there, there's so much involved with promoting a brand and growing it. Um, we were also a, a top seller in our Whole Foods region. Um, we were a top 50 selling item for quite a while. So people were buying bread, milk butter, and at the time, Honey Bunchies, which is now Bond B Honey. Um, and that was across the whole region. And I just found out actually uh, this last fall that we were in the top 20th percentile of all the nutrition bars at King Supers and City Market, which is a Kroger banner here in Colorado. And because of those sales from the bottom shelf, mind you, we actually expanded nationwide with Kroger just last month into just under 1,300 stores in 20 states. Whoa. See, you know, I, I, I to go exactly what you were, you were saying right before you, you talked about your growth, uh, getting picked up by, uh, what was it? We said, new, was it Nutricrain or something? That The other company you were talking about, like, oh, they got picked oh, up. Oh, so it's a a yeah. granola company, oh, yeah. Oh, granola. Oh, oh, I thought it was specifically like uh, Kellogg or something. But point being is, is like, oh, wow, look how great would that be? And, and you're set for life. Like, you're doing it. And you are, so you already know, like, what level of um, success that they're getting because you know what you're getting, right? So it's like the grass isn't always greener on the other side. <laughs> and you're controlling your destiny. Right. Yes. And I think absolutely. that's that's the, the the key right there is is that it slow growth doesn't mean that nobody wants it. And I and I think that um, yes. and if I remember correctly from your episode, it might have been from a different episode, but like to the extent of you want to get it where not everybody knows it because it's not been sat it's not a saturated market, right? And in your case, it's a it's a disposal or um dis uh, uh not disposable um consumable consumable, consumable yeah so uh. So it's like, you know, you, you want to get it when it's act, you know, still when it's going up, not maybe as much as like, how many bells can we, can we sell? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, once everybody's got the bell, like, how many bells are you going to have? I own four bells, by the way, but <laughs> they might keep a track of Um, But yeah, so, but you still want to get it like when it's going up, not when it's saturated and maybe on trend. And then wh where do you go from there? 
not so on trend. And that doesn't necessarily mean nobody's buying it. It just does. It just means it's not on trend anymore. And you know, then the sales aren't, you know, going up. They're just either stagnating or or working their way down to more, um, uh, I guess, more re regular levels or more normalized levels. That mm -hmm. it, you know, because you don't have that surge of like GMA is talking about my thing, or you know, it's like it's all over the place. It's everywhere. It's the Beanie Baby. It's the fur. I don't know. I'm dating myself. Uh, it's the <laughs> it's the thing. You know, the tickle me Elmo of the year um type of type of uh aspects so so yeah I, I i um going into that growth though so in the episode you talk about five things that were going to lead to to 2.2 million dollars in sales for what i assume is this year was it is it because when did you film you filmed in september you were right you oh, had you, it right on september yep. oh, okay i wasn't sure because i mean some people film at like a little bit later or no it's a summer and then september and then september is it yeah. yeah sorry i was thinking that maybe yeah that you had filmed like in january or something anyway so we're halfway through the year uh how are of those five things how are they how are they how's it going <laughs> it's going really well it's actually been amazing uh the five things <laughs> So, so uh, to remind everybody, it's 7-Eleven, yes. uh, yep. three nationwide distributors, a national retailer, big box, uh, or selling by the box, sorry, I should say, uh, mm -hmm. online growth, which, of course, you know, they're Shark Tank as well with that online growth. But you can't say that to them because it's like stating the obvious. And then private label client. Um, so how, yeah. how, how of those five things, how... Which ones were the hits? Which ones are misses or 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 still to be seen? Oh boy! Well, I, I gosh, it's it's a uh, an explanation for all of those. Really, online obviously has been crazy ever since Shark Tank, and I purposely didn't include Shark Tank in there because I, I didn't know if the episode would even air um, when I was filming. So I didn't want to put that into my calculation. Uh, that was strictly because of the banner that we were expecting from 7-Eleven and the other growth um, with the, the retailer selling by the box. So um, we actually got our first PO for that retailer two weeks after I filmed. <laughs> so that did come through and it is growing. Thank you so much. Um, that one's really exciting. They just Can you say the really retailer yet? I mean, now I, that you've. <laughs> yeah, sure, 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 sure. It's uh, Sierra Trading Post is bringing has already brought us in, um, and there may be some additional growth under under the TJ Maxx company, but that's yet to be seen. So, we are with Sierra Trading Post, and um, we're going to be producing a product for them that's unique for them, so that it's not competing with some of our other business as well. So that's, um, that's been really exciting. Uh, they're a great partner. Um, so that's happened. Uh, let's see, we had our private label we already had before I went in and filmed. So we had already been generating POs with them. Um, wasn't able to fully explain that while I was on the carpet. Um, so that one's been a, a little bit slower than we anticipated, but they're doing well. They're they're calibrating. You know, they're in entrepreneurial startup phase as well. Um, but that's still on the scene. It just did slow down a bit more than we anticipated. Um, so we'll see how that pans out. I'm still hopeful. Um, and then let's see the 7-Eleven. I mean, that's a big one. That's the one everybody's been asking us about because it was <laughs> such a big part of the conversation. And uh, actually, we we did go to that trade show that I had mentioned. And it was a free booth, by the way. You, you were wondering about that when you were watching the show. It was a free booth. Um, and at the time, I was still trying to actually understand exactly what part of it was their brands with heart program and what part of it may have just been their emerging brands program mm -hmm. as it turned out yes we were one of the top 10 percent of the 700 that were picked for brands with heart that path took us on to a test set in dallas which i think you saw online um the trade show however as it turned out they only invited 10 companies 
to come to that show for a free booth. And it was only one company per category. So one popcorn, one nutrition bar, one, you know, probiotic drink, let's say. Um, so we were the one and only nutrition bar that was picked to come to the show for free. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> to sell to 8,500 locations. Um, and we were told by 7-Eleven HQ that we should expect 30 to 50 percent close rate on all of the attendees. So that's where those numbers were coming from. It was not pie in the sky. It was it was coming from people who know. <laughs> so we did actually go to the show, but because Kroger came in uh, right before the show, actually, we found out we were going to be going national with Kroger. We could not produce enough to support all of that business. So I actually had to ask 7-Eleven <laughs> if it would be okay to go to the trade show and not sell our product, which was like the most painful thing to ask, but it was the most responsible thing we could do. You know, we can't sell when we can't produce. So um, they were more than happy to have us. We went to the show. We exposed our product to everybody who was there, thousands of stores. And in one fell swoop, we actually had a buyer for 4,000 stores asked to bring us in. And I had to say no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not right now. You know, we have a lot of growth right now, but, you know, hopefully later. 7-Eleven has been an unbelievable partner for us. And um, we're still very much in touch with them. And uh, they're waiting for us to grow a little bit more before we try again for this large expansion. So we'll be circling back with them in about a year once we get our feet under us a little bit more. It was just a little bit too much with all the growth that we have um, in addition. It's just, you know, again, the self-funded thing. You can only grow so fast. So that is well. So that is true. It was, is it a is it a capital reason, or was it because you you literally just can't produce enough bars with your current setup? It, it's both, actually. Those are intertwined because um, we make everything by hand. Uh, a lot of the equipment that we use, we've actually had to design and build ourselves. Um, and <laughs> whenever we get a new piece of equipment here, it is like a party. It's something new. Oh, this is so exciting. We, we've been, we're hand weighing every single one of our bars. Every single bar we hand weighed on a scale up until Shark Tank aired, up until like two months ago. Um, and we finally got a machine that could weigh our bars. So, you know, this is what happens when you're self-funded. You just, you just pick and choose the things that you can spend on and the most valuable things at that time. So, if we had more capital, we would be able to buy the equipment that we need to produce in larger volume. So we're buying equipment as we can, but we can only go so fast. So um, it's something that we're looking into now is, is what are our options in that area? Because we just have so much. We're having to turn business away. That, that's pretty painful. Well, I mean, it's more, it's even more complicated than that, right? You got to have space. You got to floor space yes. to, to, to yes. deal with that, right? And storage yes. for bars before they get shipped yes. and more space yes. to pack said bars to store yes. them before they get shipped and, and all those things. Like it's, it yes. is a cop more, you know, it's not one plus one equals more bars. It's yes. one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one. Whatever that is, uh, is, <laughs> it, you know, because it, it's like a little bit of this adds a lot more like, you know, uh, it's like a recipe, right? You, when you add a little bit of this, you can't just add double everything. It doesn't always uh, equate to a better uh, batch of food. Um, yeah, it is that, complicated. <laughs> it, it is. It is. I mean, but I, I just I stopped to think like so one. So that was that one. I guess I assume one company owns 4,000 7-Elevens. Yeah, uh, that was Speedway. Oh, Speedway. Okay, yeah, okay. they just acquired Speedway in the last year or two. So, uh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. And that was above and beyond oh. the 8,500 that we were allowed to sell to. So um, that was an unexpected surprise. Uh, it, it was pretty cool. <laughs> A very nice compliment to hear that they were interested. And, you know, I, I think down the road, it will circle back. And I really firmly believe this. And I said this on Shark Tank. Everything happens for a reason. 
it always works out. So it's okay. It's okay. You know, uh, Kendra, just realize that you are living in the good days. Uh, you know, it's not, you know, uh, this is the good old days when you're, you know, especially getting to weigh each bar by hand and things like that. I mean, obviously you have a machine now, but, you know, someday you'll be reminiscing about having to weigh them and how much fun you had, even though in the moment it might not have been so fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yeah hindsight right <laughs> absolutely <Yeah. laughs> so um one thing that uh came up was uh you know damon talking about family businesses uh are are tough to disrupt and i have a lot to say about that uh being in in and from family businesses uh you know my own family business so it's it is um but was there was there a lot more said that what that didn't make the cut, like the cut, the final cut, because it kind of felt like that came out of nowhere. Like, I mean, how involved is your dad at this, you know, at this point in the business in his age? I, I wish he was more involved. He would like to be more involved. My dad is amazing. He's, I wish he was sitting here right now because for everybody to meet him, he's, an amazing man, incredibly smart. He's a serial entrepreneur. Um, as I mentioned on Shark Tank, he's an F4 Phantom fighter pilot. So he's, I don't know if I can say this, a bad beep. <laughs> he's a tough cookie. He's awesome. Um, and he's very, 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 very good as an entrepreneur and as a business, businessman. So um, he has battled PTSD since Vietnam. Um, and Honestly, you know, once he started our company, he was working his hiney off. He was doing everything on his own. He was making the bars. He designed the wrappers. He wrapped the bars. He did the finances. He did all the demoing, something like 50 demos in 60 days, plus making the product. He was demoing and selling all by himself when a lot of people are retiring. And um, that, that was a lot of work and his PTSD caught up with him. You know, it started becoming like physical ailments where it's just hard for him to breathe, which impacted his being active every day. Um, so over time, he's had to pull back a little bit, but he's still very much a, a very large part of our company. We still, you know, everybody's involved, mom, dad, and my brother and I. Um, but yeah, he's he's like the pillar of this company. He will always be a part of this company, as will my mom. And my mom is involved every day in this company. Um, yeah, I mean, they're, they're both really incredible. Damon would say family visits are tough when you have your dad uh, and your mom involved, you. And then is there any other family members involved? My brother. So my brother, he runs everything on the production and manufacturing side. He's our COO. And I essentially run everything that's not in the production room. So marketing, sales, distribution, you know, even payroll. I, I have all of that on my plate. And my mom, thank you. <laughs> We're multi-hat wearers over here. And uh, uh, my mom is very, very involved in, in everything. She helps with everything around here. Um, you know, everything from both of us being in production and helping in a time of need when we need to jump in to any kind of um, contractual reviews and things like that, because she is actually an attorney by trade. So it, it's just super helpful to have in a startup business. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, mom's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is awesome. Now, uh, when, at what point and how did the name get changed to Bond B? Because it was changed the night that it aired, I believe, right? E, well, right before. Right before. Right before. Oh, okay. Um, it is a crazy coincidence. One I'm, I'm just so grateful for, really. Um, so the name originated from my dad's nickname for my mom. He's always called her Honey Bunchy my entire life, and she actually calls him Honey Bunchy as well. So Honey Bunchy has been a part of our family my entire life and beyond. Um, so when my dad recreated this recipe that she had made for him, 
He named it after her as a tribute to her. And he even launched the company on their wedding anniversary as you know a sign of his love to her. So every February 28th is a double anniversary for us. It's Honey Bunchies Day. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> we actually, before I went in and, and filmed, we had been considering a name change already. We were in the works of coming up with something that fits our gourmet honey brand and is something that will grow with us because we could see the trajectory of our company going national. We knew we needed to have a name um, that we can grow with over time. Um, so the, the, the name change was in the works at the time. And it was actually a pretty big part of our discussion that was not on air. Um, but we did talk about that quite a bit. Uh, we had already purchased the packaging, finished the redesign, produced the bars in the new wrappers before Shark Tank aired because we were getting ready for our first Kroger PO. And we wanted to be sure our new name was in place before we went national with anybody, which was Kroger at that time. So we already had all the inventory ready and we only got three weeks notice uh, from Shark Tank to know when we would actually air. Um, and luckily, we had already produced a boatload of product for Kroger in the Bond B honey packaging. <laughs> it was like, someone was looking out for us. I'm so relieved. <laughs> there was a really cute video of my mom and dad saying hi to the sharks. They were adorable. Oh. We had to we had to shoot the video about 50 times because there are so many bloopers. <laughs> I need to put together a reel. It's hilarious, but <laughs> it was a very sweet video um, that didn't make the final cut. But uh, yeah, mom is mom is here. Thankfully, uh, you know, no, still awesome. very involved. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so glad. I'm so so glad to hear that. Um, so so, how did you come up with your initial uh, offer valuation? Yeah, that's a great question. And, um, you know, we were very conservative and very careful about what numbers we were working with here. Um, we ran numbers inside and out. So that was not just like a pie in the sky kind of thing. That was really, truly taking into consideration the five things that, that I did mention. Um, so, and actually we are on track, even though some of those things didn't happen by our choice, other things have come in and we are now still on track for that number. So, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's been good. So yeah, very conservative. Um, we didn't want to do too high of a multiple. I was a little bit surprised that they, they thought it was such a high multiple, but you know, maybe I didn't do a good enough job explaining it. I will say sometimes it is hard to, to, fully explain things when you're in the tank. Um, it's a pretty intense moment. And of course, going back and watching the episode, you never want to have those moments of, I wish I would have said this, or I wish I would have done that. But I think it's only natural. <laughs> and there's so many things it's like, oh, I wish I could have clarified that a little bit better. But um, no, I, I think our numbers were very fair. And um, as I mentioned, we are well on our way to reaching them. So I feel good about it. You, um, no, that that is fantastic to hear. Um, one other thing, and it's sitting right behind you, was so the logo. I know I made a, a thing about it in the video. Like, <laughs> I, I think, yeah. and again, I, I think I clarified it towards later on in the video about the well, the B specifically, the, the yes. know, bees yeah. being um, <laughs> when when blown up so big. I was like, eh, yeah. but smaller <laughs> on the back. I was like, oh, okay, I, you know, I could see that. Yeah. Where, where yeah, did they it, come from? So you're right. They were from a childhood drawing. You had mentioned ah, that. In <laughs> I feel bad. I feel even worse now. <laughs> that poor child. What did you say? <laughs> so this is actually part of what makes our story so sweet. Um, when dad created these bars and named them after mom, he actually took a drawing that I did of our family when I was only four years old. I, I, I was surprised he even still had this sketch and I actually have it here for you. Um, it's sort of hard to see, but those are 
This is the first iteration of our bees. It's super squiggly. I'll, I'll send you an image. And later they got a little bit of a facelift. Oh, and now they look okay. like this. So it is literally my family all over our packaging. That's that's what I drew when I was little. <laughs> so I, I, well, I look, I, I, I was, you know, like I said, it was blown up and I'm like, eh. But I figured okay. it had to be somebody drew it unless it was an intentional thing. Like, um like a Peppa Pig where it's like they intentionally make it look like it's drawn by kids to make kids feel more, I don't know, attracted to it, uh, mm -hmm. more comfortable with it. Um, so did going into the tank, did you have a shark in mind? Uh, yeah. You know, I knew that Lori didn't eat honey. Um, I love Lori, but I, I knew it was going to be an uphill battle because of that. And I know that she likes to be, you know, the products that she invests in, it's things that she would use herself. So I wasn't surprised by that. Um, I, I really thought Mark Cuban would have been a great fit. And Daniel Lebetsky, yes, you mentioned that. <laughs> that would have been super cool to have him there. Um, uh I actually met Daniel super briefly years ago at a food networking event and I gave him a honey bunchies and I said, don't copy this, <laughs> but you have to try this. <laughs> um, so actually that, I don't know if that played a factor in whether or not he was there as a shark because I had already met him in the past. Um, mm. But no, you know, I think a, a lot of the sharks would have been pretty amazing. But Mark Cuban, because he is a gluten-free, he's got gluten-free experience with snacks, I think that he would have been an amazing fit. Um, and Mr. Wonderful, I have a lot of respect for his business knowledge. Um, I think that he would have been pretty amazing. But, you know, they, they all have something special to bring to the table. So I would not have been disappointed really with anybody. That would have been pretty incredible. Oh uh, no! I, I absolutely. I I kind of thought you were you would say Mark, uh, mostly because of the the gluten uh, free, and he does like to snack and and all that. And then I mean, they all loved the product. Uh, I think even I think even Lori Lori said something about that, even yeah. though she's not uh, a honey fan. And I'm a little surprised with Damon because he loves the honeybee thing. Like he, <laughs> he's a honeybee farmer, so a little surprised oh. uh, there as well. Yeah, he actually, this wasn't um, in the final cut, but he did say he loved it so much that he would be a customer for life. And I tried to convince him to just buy a few million bars and then we'd be okay. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> yeah. Um, how, how did you go about preparing for Shark Tank and balancing life Ooh. and business? Oh my gosh, so difficult. I really did not understand everything that's involved in applying for Shark Tank um, when I started the process. And let me just start by saying the process is different for every company. You know, some companies, they're on a fast track. They're in the process and out of the process and on the show in like a matter of months. So for me, it was a little bit different. Um, I actually we had a really tough time with COVID. I mean, it, that was a hard time for us. Um, we were probably 80, 90% of our business in brick and mortar and people just were not buying bars. And even if they were and they were selling out, the stores were not restocking because they were focused on toilet paper and soup. So we took a big hit. And at the time that, <clears throat> that I actually stumbled across Shark Tank, and the opportunity, I was literally sitting in my office trying to decide what I should take home. It was one of those moments as an entrepreneur where it was like, this is it. And you know, thinking about it, it makes me a little emotional right now. This is one of those things. Every entrepreneur goes through it. You have those moments where you think, this is it. And I was having one of those moments. So I got on LinkedIn and just happened to be that a Shark Tank casting producer was in the recommendations from LinkedIn as someone I might know. And I sent him a, a video that a local news station did about our company a year prior. It's very heartwarming. And I thought there was no way I'd hear back from him because there's probably thousands of people doing the same thing. And he contacted me within 24 hours 
and the ball started rolling. And um, <laughs> just you got to always take that shot. You never know. You never know. Um, and 14 months later, we're on air on Shark Tank. It, it was a long process, no doubt. There is tremendous amount of juggling. You know, we're running our business full time. We're working countless hours just running our business as it is. So a lot of the Shark Tank prep would happen on off hours, even as late as 3 a.m. a lot of times, just trying to squeeze everything in. And I'm also a mom. So, you know, I've got family to take care of, too. Yeah. So there's it's it's a constant juggle. Every entrepreneur, you know, not just entrepreneurs, but everybody understands this, like trying to balance everything in life is not easy. And then you throw in something as monumental as Shark Tank. It was really trying to find those, those <laughs> hidden hours, you know, here and there where I could squeeze things in. Um, but I was super determined, super motivated and very excited to even have the opportunity to go after this. So um, that kept me going. No, that uh, it, all, all I mean, look, one one of the things is a lot of things, right? The business, the family or or trying to get on Shark Tank, uh, you know, and then everything in between and trying to find sleep <laughs> somewhere, yeah, uh, it, it, you know, so, so somewhere in there, if I keep, you know, scratch around the bottom of that bag, I'll, I'll, I'll find sleep in there, uh, <laughs> you know, at some point. But it's uh it, it is uh, an incredible feat to to do the two two of those three things and then to to add shark tank on top of that is uh i mean it's no small feat just to, to be able to get to the carpet let alone all the stuff that we're going to talk about afterwards and preparing uh for maybe getting to air uh at some point so uh obviously you were uh you said you were a big fan of shark tank uh so, so which which is great to to know, and um, and I love that you you took a chance at just sending sending a message, you know, uh, in that you know you just never you just never know. I think uh, a great example of that was uh, I, we, I was putting together this this rewards program the other, like a like about a month ago with one of our um, our, our sales manager, and he's like. Oh, nobody's going to order XYZ thing. Like no one's going to get that off of there. And I was like, watch. And then <laughs> boom, people are buying the thing that he's like, well, I'm not questioning anything anymore, Joe. He's like, whatever you want to put into that program, just do it. Cause clearly, you know, better than I do. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, duh, you never, you, you just don't know until you put it out there and see what people have in mind. And then, you know, go from there with it. So, uh, you have to try. Yeah, you can't be afraid to fail. If yes. you are afraid to fail, you're just not going anywhere. So, you, you know, how much worse can it be? If, if he said no or never responded, I would have been in the exact same spot that I was in before I reached out. Nothing would have changed. So it's just, you know, getting over that fear of, of rejection or whatever. You just got to do it. Well, I, so I would, I, the only thing I would say is you get getting over that fear is the thing that changes. Right. And, and that, that is the, even if nothing else comes of it or, but you don't even know, right. That person might pass it off to somebody else. And then there's a new show that's going to compete with Shark Tank. And you're one of the first people, you know, five people that get to be on the show. Cause you just don't know who's talking to who, when or where, or maybe it's a year or two from now. And they're like, Oh man, they, they take a bite into some other bar and they're like, I remember when that other person reached out, like, I mean, if I got that on my LinkedIn, you just don't know. You just don't you know. Don't. You don't. I'm going to be a mom here for a minute. <laughs> so I tell my kids all the time. This is what my mom told me all the time growing up, too, is whenever you have an opportunity, it's your chance to open a door. And the more doors you open, the more opportunities you're going to have. They aren't all going to pan out. But the key is open as many doors as you can. It's a numbers game and things come together. If you don't open the doors, then your opportunity is like this. If you open the doors, you have this. Abs absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You have you have to be willing to take uh, those. Then it's not even a risk. Just open it. Um, the opportunity to I don't know expose yourself to uh, your own humiliation of your of yourself like to feel that for yourself 
because that person might never even open the message and you don't even know, right? Like <laughs> yes, exactly. you just don't know and until you throw it out there. Um, so once you did get back, uh, what did you start to do to prepare your business for, well, actually, no, before we talk about that, once you got out of the tank, uh, clearly you were, you were a bit upset. Um, even though you were still trying to be positive, which ding, ding, that's what being a super entrepreneur is all about. It's still trying to find that silver lining, as you said, and continue to move forward with it. But, um, how, you know, how were you doing after that? Like, right, now, <laughs> like, right, at, like after that camera turns off and like the psych, the psychologist or psychiatrist comes in, uh, how, 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 how was it going then? Oh man. Oh, I so wish I could have held it together. I wanted to so badly to not cry. <laughs> uh, but you know what? That was an accumulation of just so many years of grinding to get this business to where it is now. It was like the 10 minute episode was like this peak of countless years of of being an entrepreneur. And then the last 14 months, like I said, 3 a.m. nights, like just grinding to make this opportunity come to fruition. And it was a lot of hard work. It was extremely stressful balancing everything that needed to be balanced and to actually get there and not know if you're going to get there. The whole time you go through the process, you don't know if you'll actually err. So there is a lot of buildup. Um, and so... <laughs> Unfortunately, the spigot opened and everything just came out on national television. Um, but, you know, I mean, that's the passion that a person has with their own company, you know, when they put everything on the line. And it's not just my company. It's my mom and dad's livelihood. It's their home. My brother and sister-in-law and my niece and nephew, it's their only income. You know, so it's my family was on the line. It felt like my family was on the line. Regardless of what happens in Shark Tank, it felt like it was all coming to a peak. So that's what the emotion was. It was just coming out. It was just I couldn't stop it. And once the spigot opened, it was like, a you know, Niagara Falls. I couldn't make it turn off. <laughs> But, you know, it's all right. It's okay. Sometimes you got to let it out, even on national television. Um you do. Yeah, you I do. do. And you, you said all the out. right you said all the right things when you were crying though. And it wasn't it didn't turn into begging. Um it didn't like it didn't feel disingenuous like or genuine like I like I feel like people I've seen on the show in the past and would like complain like oh she's here comes the waterworks and like begging for a deal like but you know and and I think what what sticks with to with me though is you know you had um you had a plan for how like you, again you you had the five things right it wasn't just like oh we have this one thing or 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 one or two things or or in even invented things like oh well we're gonna you know damon's gonna buy a million bars but when i you know after i walk off this carpet so it's our before i get off this carpet damon's buying a million bars and it's going to be worth you know even more now here we go right so i i i feel like it was super um ge like genuine what you were saying so it wasn't just tears and like no, no, no you gotta do it and and i really thought i mean they even said afterwards right they're like man i thought <laughs> she stood there much longer i someone was gonna cave and it was probably gonna be me yeah, you know, I I think what's important is um, I would have loved to have worked with a shark. I think it would have been incredible to get an investment. Um, but I'm also extremely confident in our company, and I knew the path that we were on, and I knew that we, this wasn't going to end our company by any means. It's not like, but at, at that moment, it just feels so intense. And I could feel the welling up coming. <laughs> I thought, oh, no. Um, Lori asked me uh, what this meant to me. This, I don't think that was on uh, the episode that aired. But she did ask, you know, what, what it meant to me to be there. And that's what triggered it. It was like, oh, my gosh. Well, everything. This means everything. Being here at this moment. Um, you know, Joe, I actually 
years ago, because as a very loyal Shark Tank viewer, I always thought, you know, we're not trying to get investment, but if we ever need to, if it ever gets to that point where, you know, it's getting dire, let's just go on Shark Tank. I just thought it was that easy. We'll just go on Shark Tank. <laughs> I had no idea, but who would have thought, you know, things were actually getting dire. It was getting really scary for us. And as I mentioned, it was, you know, planning what I was going to take home from my office at one point. And it was like, well, I guess it's time to pull out the Shark Tank card. And, you know, who would have thought <laughs> it takes a long time to apply. But it's really weird how things just work out. Like, I, I, it's a dream come true that I got a chance to be there. It's something I've always wanted to do. And, and I just I still can't believe it's happened. It's been amazing. No, it is. Uh, it is amazing. And, and yeah, I mean, look, not, you know, you being in a position that you were in where it, it was not life or death uh, for for the company, I think, you know, puts a lot of power in, in your place. And it also um, enabled, you know, again, I, I feel on my on my end as a, as a viewer um, made the tears you know, more, like I said, more genuine. Cause it wasn't like, well, we're going to be out of business and like, everything's going to, you know, everyone's losing their house and nobody's eaten. Um, if we don't get this deal. Right. And it's like, this is, this is because of, of what it meant to you. Right. And, uh, so I, I do, I mean, kind of curious, how come your brother decided not to, to go or, or wasn't invited? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, well, no. Be a pain in the butt. I, I, <laughs> Tell you no, my brother is awesome. My brother is <laughs> awesome. I actually, I wish so much that my whole family could have been there with me. Um, obviously, my mom and dad couldn't come because of my, as I mentioned, my dad's PTSD and my mom wanted to be with him. And my brother had to hold the fort down. He, he just couldn't come because he needed to make sure our business was still running. So it would have been very difficult for both of us to be there, though. I would have loved to have had him there. Oh, so, uh, so after, after you get done, uh, and you get back and, and so let's talk about some of the stuff you did to prepare for potentially getting to air on Shark Tank. Yeah. You know, we went on kind of a pause with Shark Tank really, because since we didn't know, there wasn't a lot that we could do to prepare, um, we just really focused on our business. We, we, uh, that was September. We filmed, I met with Kroger in October, I think October, November. So then it's like all gears were on both 7-Eleven and Kroger. That was, that was our focus until we heard from Shark Tank in March. And then as soon as we got that email, holy cow, that <laughs> was that's all hands on deck. It was super intense. I did not sleep hardly at all. I actually had to set up like a little pseudo nap station in my office, which I never used, but I liked the idea of there being one there. <laughs> and yeah, that's when it got really crazy. That was super busy getting ready for Shark Tank to air. So, and did you end up having a watch party for it? Just with my family. Oh, okay. Yeah. We okay. kept we kept it small. You know, it was like maybe ten of us, eight of us. Uh, it it was nice because being a family business, that's who I got to share it with with my husband and my children, my mom, my dad, my brother, and his family. And that that was very special for us. Um, it was a crazy moment. It is. It, it is. And that, it's nice that you uh, you chose to to do that. I mean, some people have big parties. Some of you, you know, as we learned uh, with the episode that just did, we I just uh, released uh, on yesterday um, with the uh, Nature's Wildberry. One of them went and had a big old like party at a uh, uh, was it a Bel Air house uh, oh, wow. or, or, or was it Holly, West uh, Hollywood house or something? What I think it was. Bel I'm pretty sure it was Bel Air. Um, hey, a house while well, the other one stayed at home and worked the whole night. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, different for everybody. I, I loved having just the intimate group with my family, and um, you know, it, it was so hard to watch 
the episode, though. I think I watched it, but I did not remember anything after it ended. I didn't know what I just stared at. It was so overwhelming. I was watching uh, our real-time a map of Shopify to show when people are getting on our website and listening to my phone dinging every time an order came in. And it was so exciting and overwhelming. It's, it was very hard to focus on what was actually on the TV. It was, it was just wild. That was amazing. Like it's just incredible. I think, uh, well, N- Nature's Wildberry was saying that, like, because they aired, they were the first one to air as well in the episode and was saying that either they sold out before, like, they even got to the carpet or something. Like, <laughs> there was that many people. Like, the logo hadn't even been on the TV and people <laughs> had already gone and, like, figured it. I mean, it's all online. Like, I mean, there's blogs that figure that, you know, know what the stuff is like you know sometimes weeks ahead of time um but i so were you did you like did you did you see did you notice that like before you even got to the carpet there was already like people hitting the site oh yeah oh for sure it, so we're in colorado and it was airing in the east coast and central one hour before us and we had the map up and we could tell the second the episode started and then w- different peaks that we were expecting during the episode that would have triggered purchasing. We just saw that hockey stick go up just and, uh, and my phone was going crazy because of the little dings every time. It's a feeling I just can't put into words. It was overwhelming and I'm so grateful for the support that this country has given us. It's just mind blowing to me and I am so grateful. No, I I I, lo- I love it. So that's so that's that's great. Did you end up selling out that night? Oh, we, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so fast. All of our Kroger inventory that we had built up for Kroger was gone. Super duper. I mean, gone. And, <laughs> sorry, Kroger. <laughs> but we did. We were we were able to rebuild that inventory in time for Kroger's first PO. But. We were scrambling to meet all the demand. We had to put a, an extended lead time on all of our orders to give us a chance to produce. And people were incredibly patient with us. I'm very grateful for that. Um, but it, yeah, that was a juggling act, trying to make sure that we were communicating our lead time and, and making sure that we were keeping everybody as happy as we could. People were really fantastic. That is so great to hear. Um, so how did you end up coming across my, I mean, obviously you said in the beginning that you had watched my videos prior, uh, but when, at what point did you come across my video? Oh, right away. <laughs> Naturally, after we aired, I got online to see what's going on. What is the world saying? What's happening? And there's Joe Pardo. One of the first things that I saw. <laughs> yeah, that was that was awesome, Joe. And I'm I'm so grateful that you chose to cover our segment. Thank you so much. Oh, of course, of course. I mean, I I sacrificed my Friday nights to to do the <laughs> to do this. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's so it's so worth it though. Um, getting to bring so many new people to the the super community and also it it makes it. Uh, you know, it, it makes it worth all, all the, the people that are coming in. And, and that's that's one of the reasons I do it, because when I don't do it on the night that it airs, you know, it does not get nearly as many views. There's not as much search traffic as there is. I mean, if I could get the video like two hours before it actually aired oh. so I could have it up like for when it actually because people are just mad, like the search wave is crazy. Oh, that would be if you could figure Coast. that out. <laughs> West Coast is it's more like an like it, it's more of like a, a ride. Like it goes mm-hmm. up a mm-hmm. little bit and then it just kind of rides for a while until mm-hmm. like Saturday morning. Then then you know people are back online. I was like, I, I wonder it's like how many people are just on the West Coast are watching it via like Hulu or a DVR or something versus the East Coast. Like they're on it. Like they're watching, they're, they're on it, watching it and Googling it right when it's happening. 
It's totally my observation as well. I think mm. the East Coast and Central are all over it. And we saw the same thing. The further west it got, the more relaxed it got. Um, and I, I definitely saw the DVR effect. You know, it mm. just kept going. Um, I'd say a good solid four weeks before we saw a significant job. The first 24 hours, of course, is the biggest. And then and then it was very steady for four weeks. So a subtle decline over time. But that DVR effect um, was real. It, it, people kept watching for a long time. Yeah, it, it, it is. I mean, you I mean, I could I mean, I see it in uh, the, you know, like, well, the the analytics of YouTube and stuff like that. Like, I and if you go to Google um dot com slash trends, you can see it there too. Like, you know what mm-hmm. which products, which companies are are getting that search traffic and when they hit it and all that. Um. So, Kendra, growing up, what what was your childhood dream? <laughs> uh, I wanted to be the president of the United States. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I also wanted to be a doctor and a teacher and an Olympic swimmer. So I had a lot of dreams. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I grew up in an entrepreneurial family too, you know, so it is in our DNA. My aunts, my uncles, my mom, my dad, my brother, we, we're all entrepreneurs. So I think that I was destined to take this path at some point. And I'm really grateful for it. There are days, though. Definitely, there's days where it's like that nine to five sounds so nice, <laughs> benefits and a steady pay, <laughs> but I would not trade it. I I love, I love this ride. I'm really grateful for it, and you know, so glad that our business is still here. You know, that's a big thing as an entrepreneur is just surviving that first year and those first five years. So, you know, we took note of that every milestone we're still here it's still growing things are going well it's okay it's good <laughs> <laughs> no I, I i love it i love it and it's you know so yeah there are days when the grass is greener uh and it's like man it would just be nice to not have to worry about but i i could tell you lots of stories of friends that will have nine to fives and nightmares nine to five nightmares and they can't just easily go out themselves and go get another job because they've yeah. become so uh they've become such a, a a key like cog in that system and so specialized to that system yeah. that like just going in our job is like not that easy and meanwhile like they're being used and abused and uh yeah. and and like I've, i mean some real real horror stories that they just it's not that easy to get out of um i mean it's one of the reasons i i you know i i feel um i always say like uh that you know they people don't work for me i work for them uh you know to to create a, an environment to create a system that in which they can operate in to to make uh, themselves have a better day you know and and not i mean look everybody has things that suck with every job everything that you do hobby wise anything you touch is going to have things that suck but like let's minimize those things right and set those systems up in place for people to have um a better time and and not feel uh any kind of way all throughout their day you know i think the beauty of entrepreneurship is at the end of the day, you have control of your destiny. And that is what makes it so appealing and also so difficult um, because the weight of the world feels like it's on your shoulders. But that's what it's about. Like you, have, you have this clay that you can mold into whatever your dream is. And um, it's not easy. If it were easy, everybody would do it. And then yeah, there wouldn't absolutely. be anything special about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my great grandfather always said. If it was easy, everyone would have their own business, but they don't because it's really not easy. There's a yeah. lot of hard decisions and things that go into it, and risks, and and so, you know, there's rewards that come with it too. But you know, you you if you're doing it for the right reasons, um, you probably will enjoy it more than you don't enjoy it. Uh, you know, it's not easy. Though. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's really well that is what you know barbara she went out saying that i was too optimistic and i have to say thank you barbara because that is probably the biggest compliment that i could have gotten as a shark went out and 
I am an optimist. I am an optimist, but I'm a realist too. I am a healthy optimist. And who wants to work with a pessimistic entrepreneur? That would be <laughs> really challenging. <laughs> really? Yes. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. A, uh, I, as I always say, I'm an optimistic realist as, as I, I try to explain it. Um, yes. Exactly. You know, like, I, I, yeah, we want, you know, I want for the best. And that's why I'm always, and that's one of the reasons I do these videos, right? Is because I want to, to always look at like, okay, yeah, it might not be for me. It might not be for you, but maybe we're not the, uh, you know, we're not the target market, right? So like, how can I, yeah, okay. How can I change the perspective to somebody else or to, to a different uh, person or type of person that would be, this thing would be for that could that would look at it and say yeah this makes sense and i'm totally buying in and then is there enough of those people and then that's where the like we go like okay we could be super optimistic because like we change the, the perspective um but though and then there's the realist the, the side of it's like yeah. well but how many of those people actually exist yeah you know it, it, it being an i say the same thing an optimistic realist that is definitely me and you, know, you don't want to be just an optimist and think that everything is going to be amazing because there's going to be challenges. You have to be a realist too. Um, but I think what's important about being an optimist is that when you go through the hard times and you will go through so many hard times as an entrepreneur, you have to train your brain to look for the opportunities and the challenges because they are always there. The thing that really stinks that you're stressed about is seemingly the biggest and most daunting thing that you're going to see. But if you can take a step back and take a deep breath and look at the outer rim of that and look for that silver lining, it's there. You got to be creative sometimes, but it's there. Um, and that that's something that helps keep me going, you know, throughout my whole life. No, I, I absolutely I, I agree and, uh, and try to, uh, live my life by that as well. Um, yeah, it's like I was always like, you fix fix one thing, break two things. And yeah. Then we, get, then we go back and say, okay, how do we fix those? You know, at least one of those two things, so we can break two other things. Oh, and, exactly. And, then minim and, try, and minimizing those broken things at the same time, like, yeah, it's, it's one step it's forward, a, three steps backwards. <laughs> all the all day long, all yeah. day long, and that's the realest part of the optimist. Of like, yeah, yeah. But we're gonna fix those things as best yes. as we can with, with what's available or what we can go find out is available that we didn't even know existed. Speaking of knowing ex existing, how can people get in touch with you, Kendra? How can people get themselves some Bombi bars uh, or Bombi honey? Bar is, that, is that how would you say honey? Uh, yeah, Bombi, honey Bombi bars? gourmet honey bars. Yeah, so this is, uh, in, this is for your viewers here. This is what the packaging looks like. And... And this is what the individual bar looks like. Bombi honey, Bombi gourmet honey bars. Um, we also, that's a, our peanut pecan variety. And then we also have, we only have two flavors. Yeah, there you go. There's a website. And this is our coconut almond. So you can find us on bombihoney.com. Um, we are on Amazon. You know, as we've been discussing during this um, podcast, we just launched in Kroger. So if you're anywhere near a Kroger, Mariano's, Roundies, King Super, City Market, please get on in there, grab some bars or 10, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, just grab some bars, tell your friends and family about it. That makes a huge, huge difference. Every purchase makes a big difference for us. So I would encourage people to get out there. Um, you know, we're also in Whole Foods Rocky Mountain region. We're in natural grocers and, and, many, many, many mom and pops and individual shops all over the country. So you can go to our um, our store locator on our website and see if there's a store near you, which is constantly being updated. And if you don't see a store that you want to bind it in, you can request a store on our website and tell us what store you would like to find Bond B Honey, and we will call them and try to get the bars in there for you. Oh, okay. Wow. All right. Hamilton is uh, Stone Harbor. Very, very cool. We need, we need some more Philly, uh, Philly, Philly uh, distributors there. Yeah, you're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> yeah, one step at a time. <laughs> 
Oh, wait. But you can oh. always go online in the meantime. Wait, why does that say? So that's just Colorado. Fort Collins, Colorado. Weird. Did it you put, search by your, your zip Well, no. Code? I So I didn't. I just went through the map. And uh, like this one, Stone Harbor, that 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 makes sense. Hamilton. Yeah. Uh, but actually, Hamilton is oh, further. Oh, actually, no. I guess that is about. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I thought oh, Hamilton was a little bit further south, or it's Hamilton. I'm thinking Hamilton Mall versus Hamilton. But when I clicked on this one up here, the uh, address lists as a as a Col yeah. uh, Colorado address. Oddly, that enough. is definitely that's an a error. VA address. I apologize for that. One. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> hey, that's why we do this. That's why I do it on the end of the video too. You never. <laughs> You never know, right? <laughs> what you're gonna find. I mean, I found all kinds of like, hey, your social media link didn't didn't go anywhere, right? Uh, and things like that. There's always Happens something. The best always. There is. You fix one thing, <laughs> break two. Uh, That's right. That's what we do. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, that 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 is awesome, uh, Kendra. I really appreciate you taking the time today uh, to be here. You're always welcome to come back anytime. So feel feel free uh, to to reach out, and we'll we'll get you back on the show. Oh, thanks so much, Joe. It's been such a pleasure chatting with you. Oh, likewise. I appreciate you making it all the way to the end of this video. If you haven't watched Kendra's Top Gun intro <laughs> over on Shark Tank, go. Uh, what's that? That was. I mean, I assume that was because you know Top Gun Two was coming out. Like, not just because of your dad, but it's actually because. Uh, well, my dad being a fighter pilot, but it's also his all-time favorite movie is Top Gun, and I, it was like a tribute to my dad. And it happened to be when Top Gun 2 Maverick was coming out, so everything just aligned perfectly. Yes, 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 yes. So uh, so anyway, <laughs> if you haven't watched it, check it out up here. If not, I'll see you in the video down below. Take care and go be super. <laughs>